Hey, how's it going everyone? Today I'm going to be working on upgrading this Game Boy Pocket and I bought some parts from Funny Playing and the website and so I'm going to go ahead and upgrade this to an IPS um, screen. So this is just really a mod for it but before we go ahead and get started we want to make sure that everything's working in terms of the speaker and that it powers on at least. We really don't care about the screen since we're going to be using uh, some replacement parts and the shell doesn't really matter since we're going to be moving it to a new uh, housing as well. So let's go ahead and put some batteries in this and see if it's still working. So let's go ahead and get started on that. Okay, so I did hear some sound coming from the, the speaker. And now we don't get any display and I think the contrast wheel, uh, well, there we go. We can kind of see a little bit. There we go. The camera is picking it up. So at least that's good. So we don't have to worry about the screen. We're gonna go ahead and replace that anyway, like I mentioned earlier. Let's go ahead and start opening this and then start doing some of the cleanup for the internals and then we'll start moving it to its new home. So just by looking at it, I don't think I have to do a lot of cleaning on here. Uh, everything looks very, very clean for some reason. So we're gonna wanna inspect the front side and just make sure that everything's clean there too. So we'll remove these uh, screws from the motherboard. That way we can reveal what's on the front side of the, of the board. Now, once the screws are removed, we wanna make sure that these are pushed up. That way it unlocks this ribbon and we can free it up. So here we go. Now what I like to do, and let me go ahead and uh, zoom out here, is I like to flip it over like this and then pull it out. And that makes it a lot easier. We're not gonna be working with any of this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put this to the side and we're gonna work on the board. And so let's flip it around and see how it, everything looks. And just as I suspected, everything looks very clean, even the speaker. So um, I'm gonna give it a little clean anyway. Let's get some alcohol. So we're gonna do that real quick. And I'll clean the contacts as well while we're at it. So this shouldn't take too long. Should be very gentle here. So since everything looks pretty clean on here, I'm gonna go ahead and start uh, setting this up on the new board. So let's go ahead and move this to the side for now. And we're gonna be installing it into this housing. This one is also provided by Funny Playing, and the reason I chose this was because this one's custom and it should allow uh, for the screen that they provide as well to fit in here easily. So I did install some of the other ones and I'll go ahead and show you um, the entire process on that. And it should turn out looking pretty cool. So I I think the, the white buttons on this will, will make it look nice, but we'll go ahead and find out. So let me go ahead and get this open real quick. So this does come with the screws. I'll set those to the side. And we're gonna be working on the front side of the case. All right, so here we have the white screen. We're gonna go ahead and install this real quick. So let me go ahead and turn this machine on. It might be a little bit noisy. We're gonna blow a little bit of air to get any of that dust out so we can prevent any new dust from coming in. So in the kit, I got this uh, double-sided tape and what I like to do is line it up here because I think this is where it belongs. You can see that there's the two cutouts and they'll face to the left. And this one is gonna be over here on the light. Uh, so let me go ahead and peel this out and see if uh, we can install this real quick. So now that I put it on there, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this uh, extra film here. So let's go ahead and get that removed. 
So there he goes. And now we're going to go ahead and install the screen on there. So the next thing we're going to go ahead and do is install the screen. So here it is. Now this does have this little film that's going to come off and we're going to install it with the ribbon facing that way. Just be sure that this side down here is in the bottom left. So let's go ahead and move this film real quick from the bottom. And we're going to install it. On In case your kit came with one of these um, and it has one of these over here, we're really not going to need this at all. So I just tend to put this on the side. And this one over here is really going to be used for the sensor, which is the same thing that the other one's doing. I'll go ahead and show you how I set this one up. It's pretty simple. Uh, but with that out of the way, let's go ahead and put the buttons on here and start closing it up. All right, so before we go ahead and put this motherboard, we want to make sure that this piece here, which is a sensor, is going to be sitting on top of the motherboard here. And the reason for that is because we're going to go ahead and fold this in a little bit. Just make sure that it's not tucked behind. And uh, let's go ahead and start lining everything up here while I'm lifting that sensor. Now we just want to make sure that everything is adjusted properly. So normally this battery is the one that is causing the problems before we line it up. Okay, so everything seems to be good. I'm just gonna screw one of these in here. That way you can hold it in place for now. And I just wanna make sure that everything is good before I go ahead and screw the other, th uh, other two screws. So now that the motherboard is secured on there, we're gonna wanna uh, connect the cable, but this is over in the front. So we wanna push this to the back now. And let me go ahead and show you. So this is just gonna move here to the back just be careful don't tear it don't bend it too hard so you can see here now it's on the back and we're gonna simply just connect uh, this cable onto the motherboard and then we're gonna lock it in place this one's a little bit misaligned so let me go ahead and correct that real quick you remove it on both sides there we go okay that looks a lot better all right, so let me go ahead and talk about these two points here. So for this one, this is gonna control the touch sensor, but we're not gonna solder anything here. This is gonna be controlled here now. As for the power, this one, we're gonna wanna go ahead and create like a little uh, solder ball that's on this contact. And we're gonna go ahead and connect the magnet wire uh, that we got into pin one on this switch. So let's go ahead and uh, solder this into place. And then we'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and show you how I deal with this piece next. All right, so I wanna show you how I set this up. I don't know how other people do it, but I think this is kind of one of the easiest ways that I like to do it. And normally what I uh, do here is, or this is at least how it's supposed to go, right? The sensor is supposed to go there and you're touching it. So this top side right here is gonna face up against the plastic. Now, what I end up using is some of that double-sided tape for the screen. And I just simply uh, put some, a little strip from here that, uh, essentially tapes onto the piece of plastic and holds this in place. So let me go ahead and show you what I do for this and let me go ahead and prep that real quick. All right, so here's my double-sided tape that I use. This came with a screen. This is just kind of leftovers. And what I like to do is just get my X-Acto knife and put it under, uh, this is just kind of some post-it notes. 
and just cut it out. I don't have a, a cutting board. I should probably invest in one. And I cut it around. Actually, this one might be a little too small. Let me cut it from here up until there. That's a pretty reasonable size. Just want to make sure that I cut it. There we go. And this should just come off. And now this is a pretty reasonable size and I'm only going to remove one side of it. So just to kind of show you here is that piece and this is kind of how long it looks right and you can see that it's gonna fit there uh, pretty comfortably so let's go ahead and attach this to the back so we're gonna go ahead and remove just one side I like to keep the other side that way in case uh, you do want to remove it it's not too terrible so here I'm just removing that one piece and we're gonna attach it here to the back side. There you go. And so now that it's attached on there, we want to just get the tweezers and simply press it up against it. So here we go. And that's pretty flushed up against it. There you go. Now that's the way I do it. I don't know if there's a different way that other people do it. Um, but this one seems to be a pretty efficient way of just kind of reusing materials that uh, came with the kit. So once that's completed, we can go ahead and just attach the back casing. And we should be able to screw this in and we're done. Oh. But before we do, don't forget the power switch like I almost did. So there we go. Now we can go ahead and close it. All right, so that pretty much wraps it up. So one thing I did notice in case you guys are gonna point that out. So the screen that came with it, and I think I made this mistake. I'm gonna go ahead and try to uh, just make a note on that. And I kind of messed up on that. So this previous model that I had over here, this one did not have the power light. So I did make the mistake in ordering one with the power on uh, the little light here, but Hopefully it's something that uh, they can overlook. If it's really that big of an issue, I can go ahead and replace it. Normally I use a tool like this. It's a suction cup and just kind of go ahead and place it and then remove it from there. Only if, the, if it's really that big of an issue, but honestly, I don't think it's that bad. Um, as you can see here, the lights did change. I think this is a really cool feature and that's located exactly where we place it. So here you can kind of see the that black tape that we put and it's just simply right here so we can uh, change between the the different color schemes that it has now I think this color looks really good I think it's uh, I like the way it looks the white with the blue it's really sharp the only complaint I had with the kit that I got from funny playing was that it didn't come with the stickers on the Game Boy pockets now I don't know if that was by mistake but I did notice that they didn't deliver these to me um, all the other ones that I did get for the Game Boy Advances and the Game Boy Colors, I got that, but not for the pockets. Uh, I don't know, but like I said, if that was intentional, but um, I'm going to go ahead and order some. And then once I get those, I'm just going to get the hologram ones from uh, Handheld Legend. And I think they'll, they'll look really sharp. Now, I do have a couple more Game Boy Pockets that I plan to work on, but unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to record those because honestly, once you see one of them, I think they're all pretty similar um, in terms of just setting it up. I just wanted to go ahead and show you this one because, I mean, I just got the parts. I was excited and I wanted to share it with you guys. But 
I will create a post just to show you the different color schemes that I did create on those once they're completed. Um, I might create some videos on the other ones that do have some defects, so I'll look out for those. And other than that, that pretty much wraps this video up. Now, I hope you liked it. I thought this was pretty cool. I wish I had one of these. Maybe I'll invest in keeping one of them at some point. But I had a lot of fun working on this um, on this mod for the Game Boy Pocket. I think it looks very sharp. If you like today's content, please be sure to hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, just subscribe as it helps support this channel. And I can go ahead and release more videos. As always, thank you all for watching. I'll catch you all next time.